In the NASCAR Cup Series, there are some drivers that look like they have no clue what they're doing and don't look like they belong in the Cup Series. But on the other hand, there are those that, without a doubt, are the superstars of the series and are an elite category of NASCAR. So today, we're going to be ranking all 34 full-time NASCAR Cup Series drivers from worst to first. Now, let me start by saying, this isn't based on where they are in points or stats. This is where their performance level is in their respective rides. Number 34, Harrison Burton. Harrison Burton has been in the Cup Series for three seasons now and has shown no signs of improvement. And if anything, he has regressed. It has been a disaster for the last three seasons and it has ultimately led to Burton getting dropped at the end of 2024. Number 33, Austin Dillon. Dillon's 2024 season has been a disaster. He currently only has two top tens and a best finish of six at Gateway, but he also has 15 finishes outside the top 20 in 20 races. These results have led many to wonder, maybe it's time that Austin Dillon moves to a competition role within his grandfather's team, RCR. Number 32, Zane Smith. Now I'm not going to rip too hard on Zane Smith, despite him having a disastrous rookie season, while his teammate and fellow rookie Carson Hosevar is running well and a top 20 contender almost every week. Smith is currently last in the standings among full-time drivers and only has 6 top 20s and has 9 finishes of 30th or worse. But I'm not going to judge too harshly because it is his rookie season and he is on an expansion team. Number 31, Daniel Hemry. Now let's all be real here, if Hemrick didn't carry his sponsorship, he wouldn't even be considered for a cup ride. As of right now, he is 30th in points and only has 3 top 10s, and has been largely irrelevant for the season, and it still looks questionable why he was put in the full time cup ride and not AJ Allmendinger. Number 30, Ryan Priest. Priest is in the middle of his 5th full time cup series season and his 2nd with SHR. But despite this recent career move, it has not worked out for Priest in the Cup Series. Priest's stats are still largely the same as last year and has shown little to no improvement from last year. And because of this, it's going to be hard for Priest to find a good ride at the end of the year. Number 29, John Hunter Nemechek. Nemechek has been underwhelming this season. Everyone thought that with the key TRD partner treatment that Legacy Motor Club would be getting, that Nemechek would run well. But it hasn't. He only has 5 top 20s on the year and just hasn't been a good season so far. Number 28, Austin Sendrick. Now despite Sendrick's surprise win at Gateway, it hasn't been a good season for him. His average finish is almost the exact same as last year and he hasn't improved. Now while he does have a win, he is not performing near the level that a Penske car should be at. Number 27, Corey LaJoy. Now coming into 2024, everyone thought that with Spire expanding and with the new Gainbridge money, the team would make the leap to top 20 status, and that LaJoy would be a playoff contender. But that hasn't been the case. LaJoy sits 31st in points and has regressed big time from last season. Number 26, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Stenhouse in 2023 was very solid, hanging around the top 15 in points all season and showing potential with his team, JTG Daughtery. Some people thought that the momentum would carry into 2024, but it just hasn't. He has regressed and is sitting 24th in points and is worse in every single category. Number 25, Daniel Suarez. Now while Suarez does have a win this season at Atlanta, he has been disappointing. Suarez is struggling to stay inside the top 20 in points and is just not showing any speed. His average finish is worse than last year and honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if he gets dropped by Trackhouse at the end of 2025. Number 24, Bubba Wallace. Now Bubba hasn't been bad in 2024, but he hasn't been necessarily good either. He has regressed slightly from last season and is looking like a long shot for the playoffs. He is not showing any speed while his teammate Tyler Reddick is consistently running top 10 showing speed, and contending for wins. Number 23, Eric Jones. Now while Eric Jones is driving on a growing legacy motor club that is clearly struggling, he is also fighting a back injury, which is without a doubt hindering his performance. So for this reason, 
I'm not going to say too much about him, and he's kind of an incomplete grade. Number 22, Justin Haley. Now, Justin Haley is putting what is typically a backmarker Rick Ware racing car in places that it just shouldn't be. He is consistently contending for the top 20 every week and is giving RWR some really solid results. He is doing everything that that team needs him to do, and he has eight top 20s on the season. Just simply remarkable. Number 21, Noah Gregson. Gregson has been really solid in his sophomore season for a dying SHR. His 2023 season was an absolute disaster. And now in 2024, he has six top 10 finishes and sits 23rd in points. Now, while this doesn't sound great, it's better than what we all expected. Number 20, Todd Gilliland. Gilliland has proved me wrong this season. I thought he was an overrated driver but he is consistently running inside the top 20 and he has improved immensely from last season. He is currently 19th in points and has an 18.9 average finish, which is a top 20 among full-time drivers. And he is also ahead of his experienced teammate, Michael McDowell in the standings. Number 19, Carson Hosevar. Hosevar has had a really solid rookie season. Everyone thought that Josh Berry would run away with rookie of the year. But Hosovar has made that battle somewhat close. Before his 25 point penalty, he was tied for the rookie of the year. Hosovar is also outrunning his fellow teammate and rookie, Zane Smith. Hosovar is sitting 25th in points and is doing what his experienced teammate, Corey LaJoy, should be doing. Number 18, Josh Berry. Rookie Josh Berry has met and maybe exceeded expectations. Barry is sitting 21st in points and has two top fives and four top tens. Barry runs really well on the short flat tracks and is doing what he needs to do in that four car. Number 17, Michael McDowell. McDowell on the stat sheet is having a worse season than last year, but I don't think that it's really him. He has had so much bad luck this season. The steering issues at Coda, the crash at Talladega, wheel troubles at Dover, his transmission at Nashville, the blown tire at Iowa, just so much bad luck has led to him being 22nd in points and not really representing where this team should really be. Number 16, Chase Briscoe. Briscoe has been impressive this season. He has been in the playoff hunt all season and he is doing this on a dying Stuart Haas racing team. Briscoe is on pace to have his best season yet and he has shown speed and perseverance at times when all of his teammates aren't even in the top 20. With all of this, it's not surprising that Joe Gibbs Racing chose him to replace Martin Truex Jr. in the 19 and 2025. Number 15, Chris Busher. Busher has been solid this year, but it is a clear step down from last season. But it hasn't all been his fault. Bad luck has plagued his season, but despite this, he is still well above the cut line, and I believe that by the end of the season, he will get a win. Number 14, Alex Bowman. Bowman is coming off of a down 2023 season, which was largely hindered by a back injury. In 2024, Bowman has been very solid. He finally broke his 80 race winless streak at Chicago and has four top fives and 11 top tens, which is one more than teammate Kyle Larson. He also has a 13.8 average finish, which is fifth among full-time drivers. Bowman has just been solid this year. Number 13, Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs has shown a ton of improvement from his rookie season. He is well above the cutoff and running up front more frequently and has improved in every area. I have the feeling that Ty Gibbs will get his first career win very soon. Number 12, Joey Logano. Now it's no secret that Logano and Ford as a whole have struggled this season. Now while he did win at Nashville, let's be real, that win was very lucky. But Logano did get the win nonetheless and has been running better in recent weeks and so has Ford as a whole. Number 11, Ross Chastain. Chastain has been one of the top drivers for the past two seasons and that isn't any different in 2024. Now while his stats don't look the best, he is quietly one of the most consistent drivers in the Cup Series. He has the sixth best average finish in the series and has been close to a few wins this season like Nashville and Texas. Number 10, Kyle Busch. Right now, Kyle Busch is really hard to judge. Busch is having his worst career season to date. He has had the worst luck and his team RCR is continuing to let him down. 
it's obvious that RCR isn't what it was two years ago with Tyler Reddick, and it's just so obvious that the team is off. Three cars isn't running well, Bush is driving in over his head, but the reason why Bush is this high is because I don't think that his issues are really on him. I think it's the cars RCR is bringing to the track. Number 9, Brad Keselowski. Brad finally got the monkey off his back and broke his winless streak, and finally got a win as an owner driver. Keselowski currently sits 10th in points and is improving over his past two seasons, and who knows, Brad could be that dark horse contender for the championship later in the season. Number 8, Tyler Ruddick. Reddick has taken the next step in his career. He is consistently running in the top five and cutting down on the mistakes. Reddick has the second best average finish in the series and is third in points with one win, eight top fives, and 13 top tens. Consistency has been something that Reddick has struggled with his entire career. But now, Reddick has improved in that area and is definitely a championship contender. It's number seven, Ryan Blaney. The defending series champion has not had an ideal season this year, and a lot of it is just bad luck. Blaney has been running up front, but it seems like something always happens that takes him out of contention. But Blaney has shown speed, and it resulted in a win at Iowa, and I believe come playoff time, Blaney will be right there in the mix. Number 6, William Byron. Byron took that next step last season and was more consistent in the middle part of the season. And while he is a little worse than last season, he is still showing speed and right now he is 7th in points with 3 wins on the year including that Daytona 500 win. He is now competing for that top spot within Hendrick Motorsport. Number 5, Martin Truex Jr. MTJ has been solid this season. Now while he hasn't won yet, he has been very consistent and sits 5th in points and continues to be one of NASCAR's best drivers. Truex is in the middle of his retirement tour, and he could very well contend for this year's championship and go out on top. Number 4, Chase Elliott. Elliott has bounced back this season and in a big way. He has the best average finish in the series and has a win. He has been very consistent this season and is having a Matt Kenseth 2003-S season. Not winning or running up front a lot, but just killing the field with his consistency. Number 3, Christopher Bell. Bell has been insane this season. He has three wins and is consistently contending for wins. Bell has been exceptional, especially on the flat track. And this skill is why a lot of people around the industry have Christopher Bell circled to win it all later this season. Number two, Denny Hamlin. Now while Hamlin does not have a championship, he does have a lot of wins. Even into his mid 40s, he is still putting up elite numbers and contending for wins week in and week out. He has been consistently running up front and shows no signs of slowing down. And number one, Kyle Larson. What is there really to say about Larson that hasn't been said already? He is simply the best driver in the Cup Series. Despite him missing a race, he is still in the points lead and he is contending for wins almost every week. He is the most talented driver in the Cup Series hands down and it shows with the raw speed that he has in the five car almost every single week. Now I can already hear all the comments saying, you clearly know nothing about racing. Why is this guy not higher? Well, why is this guy not lower? And people calling me a dumbass and a retard, but guess what? I don't care. This is my channel and my opinion, and if you don't like it, that's fine. But don't go to the comments section and be an asshole about it. So anyway, that'll do it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you next week for another video.